Things were going well, but over the months, I felt the relationship changing. I think we both could feel that an end was going to be inevitable. But we still were in love. Though sometimes lonely, in a weird way. It felt like we were the only people in the world. Maybe I didn't mind Will getting closer to Harry because it felt like our own love was too much for two people. We were all, Will, Harry and me, studying on the same English degree. I'd seen the way Harry and Will looked at each other. There was a spark there. I know some people would feel jealous, but I don't know. Being around Harry made Will happy. I'll never forget that time, seeing their friendship grow. We would watch videos in bed together, or whatever was on the TV. Coronation Street had a transgender character. It wasn't something I'd thought much about before. Being straight, I'd never thought much about my sexuality. I never felt that I needed to. I was me. Will was just himself too. And I just kind of accepted that. It's funny to tell you this now, but I was never jealous of Harry. You'd think I would be, but I loved Will so much. I just wanted him to be happy. We would listen to music as we fell asleep. Will had a CD recording of a thunderstorm. The sound of the rain was relaxing, but there were a couple of bits of thunder that would make me jump. We listened to a lot of Porter's Head. Even now when I listen to them, I remember being back in that room, in his arms. As the months went by, we went out less. We would go out to meet up with Harry and a couple of other friends, but it was mostly just Will and me. Those memories will always be a warm place for me. It might seem odd to you, but it was my suggestion. I told Will to ask out Harry. I loved him. I knew it would make us all happy for Will to have Harry in his life. It was something he needed to do. Helping a person find their true love, that's an honor. It's a kind of magic right there. For a long time though, I wish that true love had been me. Let me paint a picture for you, of the end. Will had been seeing both me and Harry at the same time for about six months. I can see you think that sounds weird, but it really wasn't. We were all open, safe, and honest about it. The picture. It was in the basement of the Royal Oak in October. You could still smoke in pubs back then, and the faint smell was always there. The tables were dark, heavy wood, the stone floor smelled slightly of disinfectant. The chairs were covered with a tapestry weaving type of fabric that was worn away from years of use. I knew what I was going to say to Will. I had a friend before uni who was having boyfriend problems and asked me what love is. 
I told her that love was being able to tell a person that you never wanted to see them again. Even though it broke your heart to do it, you would tell them to leave you because it was right. I was quite happy with that answer, like love was something from a Shakespearean tragedy. I don't know why they asked me. I'd never been in love when I said that. I didn't think I'd have to do it myself one day. I didn't expect to be right. We need to talk. Oh? This isn't right. You mean us? I feel like I'm getting in your way. You're not. This is good. Sure, but I don't know if it's good for you. I... I'd like to be the one making that choice. I'm happy with you. I love you, but this isn't about me. I love you too. I want to be with you. I know. But that doesn't mean you should be. Is this it? Can I do anything differently? No. But thank you for wanting to. I don't want this. Me either. But it's right. I love you. I love you too. I loved him so much. It hurt so badly to let him go. I never forgot him. I never stopped loving him. Love doesn't just stop. It's not like a room you just walk out of. Our love, the warmth of it, became a memory I cherish. I've never loved anyone like that again. It took me two years to get over Will. I could see him falling in love with Harry. Soft and deep love, not like the fire we had. It was beautiful. I didn't really consider that we could all have kept on dating together. You know, it might have worked for a while, but that wasn't what we did. It's just the past. I don't know if what I felt was a proper depression, but it was definitely a really bad time for me. 
I just worked really hard all of the time and got a great degree grade from it, so that was something good for me from it all. Sarah and I still meet up. It took a few years before that was comfortable. I still love her. I'm not sure she realizes how much, but not the way I did back then. The things that we've been through, they lead us to the present. The people we've loved shape who we are now. Sarah means so much to me. She moved on years ago, but the way she changed me, opened me up, gave meaning to the choices in my life. What's that, Harry? Yeah, I'm spraying my pits while thinking about proposing to you. Maybe I won't tell him this bit. In all the mundane things, it's easy to lose that feeling of purpose. I love him. I'm being stupid, wanting action and adventure every day. I've got enough of that and love right here. Or I wonder if he would like more than only marriage. We could start a family. Kids. Wow. That, that could be good, actually. Maybe I'll leave that conversation to another day, eh? One thing at a time. Oh, I could propose and he says no. Am I going too fast? I think Harry wants a family. We'll talk about it. I think it would be good.
first day of the rest of my life. Keys. I don't know what lies ahead, but it'll be amazing. I love you. Have a good day. This life's been kind to me, and I've got to change. To stop taking it for granted. I should have looked at this view more. I'll do that from now on. The stairs are better for me. It gives me time to think. There's a whole future ahead. I should feel closer to Harry, but the tech is like a tide slowly pulling at us. Just drifting through the days. I'm going to change things. I don't want to lose what we've got to by not paying attention to it. Hmm. Some of the patterns are worth keeping. Other patterns, they're just habits with no meaning.
It was easy to get lazy, to let things fall slowly into a dull routine. Things are okay, but they're not going anywhere. It's time to take control. I can't think how often we chatted there, talking late into the night. Maybe we'll go feed the ducks this weekend. I love the way they walk. I'm happy with him. I have to be sure he knows that. We didn't always get much of a chance to see each other during the weekdays. He worked really hard. He loved his job. On Sundays, we would go to the park to feed the ducks. It was the end of the summer, but we went there even in the winter. It was out in the open. We felt free there. It was our place to be together. Silly, really. There's nothing here that doesn't make me think of him. He would quack at the ducks. He pretended to have conversations with them and that we saw the same ones every week. He began to set up little stories between them. And then one day, he was gone.
The crash investigators don't know whose fault it was. I just can't get myself to feel that it matters. He was... He was driving, and now he's... They took him to hospital. Someone called me, but I don't remember who. And I don't remember how I got to the hospital. He was dead when I arrived. These things, these reminders of our time together. I never thought I'd be here, wanting them gone. We would lie in bed and read, our breathing sinking. He would close his book, kiss me, and fall asleep. Such a small thing. A week after the crash, I was calm. Then I saw his toothbrush and knew I had to throw it away. And wept. Collapsed on the floor of the bathroom. When friends come to visit me, they speak to me in a quiet voice, as if a loud sound might startle me. They ask about the missing objects. I say, I'm going for a minimalist look. They nod and give me a strained smile, but I know they don't believe me. They know the reminders hurt too much.
I've been walking more since he died. I've been trying to get away from the memories to find something new. But everywhere I go, I see things that make me think of him. The car was barely damaged in the accident. It was just a knock. Twisting his neck the wrong way. The insurers asked if I wanted to repair the car. But I couldn't speak to answer. I can't face going to restaurants yet. I don't want a table for one. He used to do the dance from singing in the rain. He was terrible at it, but he liked making me laugh. I decided to stay inside more. Keep to the inside. I can control what's in here. But even at work there are reminders. I need this space to be clear, so I can be free. I can't stand how I feel inside right now. Something has to change. How are we supposed to go on in their absence? When will it stop hurting to think of him? Get rid of all these things. I'll get new things, things that I didn't use with him. I'm nearly there. It's all gone. He's gone. But he's not. I can't get rid of him. Why won't he leave me alone?
I'm different now. He changed me. I feel the space he's left inside me. But it's okay. It's his shape that's going to be part of me that I carry forever. Denying that would be killing him again. I can live. It's okay to do that. And be happy again someday soon. Eventually. Happy I knew him. He'd hug me now. Laugh at me for crying and probably burst into tears and start laughing at himself too. I'm going to read every one of his books. Our lives are written into the small things all around me. Maybe they'll carry another story someday, but it's enough to have those memories here for the moment. I don't know if this world is all there is, but the time with him meant something. It was special to me. That time will never happen again. I'll never forget him. He reached out to me when I had pushed him away. Once I looked after him, but that day he looked after me. The world was changing and he was changing becoming more mature. He showed me things I had never seen before. OK, so this is the mouse. Mm. He came to visit me often over the next few years. And then, you came to see me.
and then you told me what had happened. It's one of those strange things. I had just been thinking about Will. We met up again after uni. There was a reason we got together to begin with. We just got on really well. We became friends again when he got the travel writing job for that London agency. He talked about you both often, and his life in general. He told me how happy he was. And then you called me. Hello? He was happy at the end. He loved you both so much. I keep on thinking I see him, or feeling like he's just sitting reading in the next room. It's silly, really. I kept thinking about how bad my luck was, but that's not true. We were lucky. We were so lucky. After we shared our memories, I went back to the park where I had spent so much time with Will. They had shared fragments of his life with me that I had never known. I felt at peace. Talking with them, even without Will, I felt I wasn't so alone. I was never alone. I just needed to reach out. Sometimes we only get to spend a little time with the ones that we love the most. I wasn't ready to accept that. But this is my life now. Without him. We had good times. Better times than some people get in their whole lives. That's enough for me.